Welcome to reading history number 14, as I will be reading the final few pages of Great Uncle Ernest's first diary. I will begin, though, with a picture of my dad and mom uh, here with a beautiful Ayrshire cow, uh, one of many prize-winning Ayrshire cattle that my dad and grandfather showed at fairs and exhibitions. Now, I'm not sure if Ayrshire cattle were part of the milking herd when Great Uncle Ernest was helping his father milk the cows, but I do know once my grandfather took the reins, George Mervyn Farrier, they definitely became the number one herd. Uh, he was uh, owner of Wainley Farms, breeder of prize-winning Ayrshire cattle. He had even been president of the Lanark Leeds Ayrshire Breeders Association in the 1940s. And I know for many years he was director and eventually president of the Perth Fair Board. Now here is a picture of my father as a young boy and the younger boy with him would be Uncle Keith and they have two beautiful Ayrshire calves. The one on the left is Wainley Nora and the one on the right is Wainley Milkmaid and they are both sired by Lakeside Dauntless. My dad also milked Ayrshires all of his life, up until the time that he retired in the early 2000s in his uh, mid-70s. Growing up in the 1980s, I remember almost every farmer around us having Holsteins, but Dad held fast to his beloved Ayrshires, with a scattering of Jerseys and Guernseys and an odd Holstein in the mix. I also remember the Ayrshires as being very friendly and gentle cows, who I often befriended when I would help Dad out with the milking. And the last registered Ayrshires that I remember my dad owning were four beautiful cows, there is Lovely Lass, Red Lass, and White Lass, and then Norma. Sadly, the number of registered Ayrshires in North America has declined significantly in the last decades, as they just cannot compete with the Holsteins in milk quantity produced. And now I will begin with Sunday, January the 1st, 1905. Great Uncle Ernest skipped an entire year as the last entry I had read in reading history number 13 was Wednesday, November the 4th, 1903. Sunday, January 1st, 1905. Tis New Year's Day and Sunday too. The weather is not nearly so cold as it has been. In fact, it is quite mild. I went to church this morning with father and mother and some of the other boys. The slaying is very fair now on some roads, but in town where the sewage work has been going on, the roads are very rough and uneven, and consequently the slaying is very poor. Tonight we all hung up our stockings and expect a considerable quantity of gifts to be in there in the morning. Monday, January the 2nd. I cannot say that I got quite as much as I expected this morning, as it only consisted of a book entitled The Deer Slayer, and a handkerchief, and a few candies, and an orange. The other boys all received books too. Lloyd's was entitled Willis the Pilot, and Leslie's was Tom Brown at Oxford. Lloyd's is a sequel to Swiss Family Robinson. Alec and Harold both got books too. The weather was quite mild this morning, but by noon the wind was changed, and by night it was quite cold. This morning father drove up to Micaville to vote. There's considerable interest taken in the municipal elections this year in Burgess as there are nine candidates for township councillors, and also because one of the candidates for the office of county commissioner is a Burgess man, Mr. John Wilson. The other candidates are Mr. Joseph Rogers of Perth and Mr. George Groom and Robert Smith of Elmsley. This afternoon, we all went down to Uncle Alfred's. Uncle Alfred is seeking election for the office of Reeve and was away all day. Tuesday, January the 3rd. Twas very cold today. This morning, father took five fall pigs whose total weight was 615 pounds. Isaac Ferrier bought them and paid us $4.75 cut. This is the highest figure that has been paid for some time. While in town, he saw the returns of yesterday's election. Mr. John Wilson and Mr. Joseph Rogers are the elected commissioners in the Tay Division. Mr. Robert Bournes was elected Reeve in Bathurst. Uncle Alfred failed to be elected in Elmsley as Reeve. 
Wednesday, January the 4th. School commenced today for another long term. Miss Pevlin, the same teacher that taught last year, is hired again but with $10 of a raise. Her salary now is $260. A serious trial has fallen to my lot today, although not altogether unexpected, as I was told a week ago. But today, Dr. Hannah came out, put me to bed, tied a weight to my right foot, which by the way is the afflicted leg, and left me cheering information that I was to consider myself lucky if I was out of bed in six weeks. Cheering, indeed. Thursday, January the 5th. Misfortunes, they say, never come single. And in my case, it appears true, for when I awoke this morning, I found that Mother had been taken away in the night by Johnny Allen and would not be back until tomorrow, at least thus, leaving a long day to spend by myself. However, by the aid of a book or two, I pull through. Father and Lloyd went back to the bush and brought home a load of wood this afternoon. Friday, January the 6th. Mother came home today and brought us the happy information that Johnny Allen had become a father to a bright little baby boy yesterday morning. Naturally, both parents are very proud of him. Saturday, January the 7th. There was a large quantity of snow fell last night, one of the largest, if not the largest, that has taken place for years. Today was to have been the annual meeting of the cheese factory, but owing to the bad state of the roads, scarcely anyone came, and so it was postponed. It took father an hour to go up to the factory, and several times he had to stop and rest his horse. Sunday, January the 8th. No one went to church today on account of the very bad state of the roads, as it stormed some more in the night. I don't know how it was, but today has been the longest day yet. Monday, January the 9th. Father and Lloyd made their second trip to the bush, and they said that it was in a very bad state for chopping as the snow is very deep. This evening, father and mother went up to Johnny Allen's. Shortly after they left, Mr. and Mrs. Alex Abercrombie and Alex Holliday arrived along and stayed until about 10 o'clock. A little later, Pa and Ma arrived home. They said that both mother and baby were doing very well but that the parents could not yet settle on a pretty enough name. They had, however, several narrow escapes from an upset. Tuesday, January the 10th. Today was somewhat stormy, at least this morning was. Father took Alex and Harold to school this morning, but as the teacher was sick yesterday and had not arrived by nine o'clock, they concluded that she was not coming and so came back home again. On the road home, father went up to Alex Abercrombie's, and when he was coming away, they gave him four books for me. One of them, at least I know, is a splendid book. It is The Great Battle of the British Army. So if books can make me happy, I surely ought to be satisfied. This afternoon, the weather was too cold. They considered to go chopping, so father and the boys cleaned grain in the barn. Monday, January the 11th. There was no school today, nor is there to be any more this week, as the teacher is sick. Lloyd and Alec went with father to the bush this morning and left Leslie and Harold to do the chores. This afternoon, they all went back. They are working on a somewhat different plan in the bush this year. They are piling the wood in the bush, not just in little piles where they fell the trees, but are using a horse and hauling them to a convenient place to bring home when they commence the job. My first week of confinement was up this afternoon. It has been somewhat a long week, but I cannot say that it has been quite as bad as I expected, for I have not suffered very little pain. It has commenced to storm this evening, but I scarcely think it will continue to storm all night. Thursday, January the 12th. It was not very fine this morning, so father went to town and through the greater part of the time was spent on the road, yet he did not get home until two o'clock. Consequently, it was too late to go to the bush, as they had intended. I cannot say that father increased my pleasure by his trip to town, as he called on the doctor, who gave him a bottle of bitter medicine, which though it may contribute to my health, it won't increase my good pleasure. 
Friday, January the 13th. We had the finest day today that there has been for some time. Father and the boys got another full day in the bush today. They are chopping along the side next to Alex Abercrombie's maple bush, nearest home. The wood they are getting there is chiefly beech. I finished reading The Deer Slayer today. I commenced reading it on Tuesday. It is a fairly interesting book, although I consider a hanty book more to my taste. I have commenced reading The Great Battle of the British Army now. This evening, Johnny Allen came down for mother, and I don't know when she'll return. Saturday, January the 14th. This morning was frostiest that we've had for some time. Father went to the bush, taking both Lloyd and Leslie with him. He had to go to the annual meeting of the cheese factory this afternoon, and so he decided to leave the chores to be done while he was away. The meeting came off all right this afternoon, although the attendance was somewhat small. The same officers were elected for coming year that have been in for the past two. Mr. Allen has, however, obtained a raise of $15 in his salary. The contract of supplying the season's wood was also set, being given to William Otway for the sum of $110. The cheese maker for the season was hired tonight. At least he just signed his agreement now. He is Mr. Alex A. Park, the same maker that we had last season. He is to receive 35 cents per cut for all the cheese he manufactures. Sunday, January the 15th. There was just Alice and Lloyd went to church today. They brought home several books and they said that there were several people inquiring after my health. It is very pleasing indeed to be remembered by one's friends. Tonight, Russell Moody came up to see me. Johnny Allen and Alice Emerson came down and told us that Mother was not likely to be home before Wednesday night at least. Monday, January the 16th. The weather is not nearly so cold today. Indeed, there are signs of a thaw in the appearance of the weather. The boys had another holiday today. No one went to the bush this morning owing to the extra amount of chores that there was to do at home. Father and three of the boys, however, went back this afternoon. They have been hauling wood to the one pile ever since they started leaving their wood in the bush, so I think they ought to have a considerable size pile. Tuesday, January the 17th. The weather has veered round until it is more like a snowstorm today. There was school today, all right, and the teacher came yesterday, too. She was somewhat cross today and gave all who came yesterday and then went home and in position. I got more reading today again. Mrs. J.D. Moody brought me a large bundle of papers. Father and the boys got another day in the bush again. They commenced another pile today. Alex Abercrombie is also getting out wood, too. He is working not very far from where our wood is coming from. His wood, though, is for the drag saw. So far, I do not think he has fallen any trees, as there were quite a number of trees lying in his bush. Many of the logs are, however, beginning to decay, and so therefore will not make the best wood. Well, my diary is about full, and so I will have to close my book. It is more than three years since I began to keep this diary, and many indeed have been changes since then, but I must close, so goodbye. Ernest J. Ferrier, Scotch Line, Wednesday, January the 18th, 1905. So that is where we will finish today. We have completed Great Uncle Ernest's first diary. Next video will be beginning the second diary I have in my possession, which is dated from June the 23rd, 1906. Thank you for listening to Reading History with Great Uncle Ernest.